Hello guys, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Simona and today we're going to be talking all about organic chemistry, your favorite subject, I know. Specifically, we're going to be talking about acids and bases. But before we get into the video, I gotta say it. Please make sure to leave a like, comment, save, and or subscribe to my channel if you like my content and you want to support moi. But enough about the YouTuber stuff, let's get into the chemistry content. To define an acid and a base in organic chemistry, we must go back to the basics and we must talk about Bronsted Lowry acids and bases. Now Bronsted, he only cares about the protons. So acids are going to be proton donors and bases are going to be proton acceptors. For example, let's consider this reaction. Step one of every single reaction ever, we have to identify all electronegative atoms. So here we have a chlorine, which is electronegative. It is a halogen. So it's going to be pulling electrons towards itself and that'll leave the hydrogen in an electron deficit. So it can be defined as electropositive delta plus. Now this H is going to be electrophilic. It can be attacked by nuclear nucleophilic things, as we've discussed in other videos, where nucleophilic things are going to be things that have excess electron density, so they either have lone pairs or they have pi bonds. So here we have H2O, and H2O has two sets of lone pairs. The oxygen that is delta minus is going to use one of its lone pairs to attack that delta plus H via two in, two out, where the chlorine will leave as a leaving group, where we get H3O plus and Cl minus. So here we can see on the left hand side of this reaction that HCl acted as the acid. It gave up a hydrogen, whereas water acted as a base. It went in and attacked a hydrogen. So on the opposite side of the equation, we can say chlorine would act as the base, so it's going to be the conjugate base. Because in the reverse direction, to produce HCl again on the left hand side, the chlorine minus must go and attack one of those hydrogens, two in, two out. So here, H3O plus is going to be a hydrogen donor because it is going to lose a proton and become H2O. So H3O plus would be the conjugate acid. So we got our acid, base, conjugate base, and conjugate acid. Hmm, now let's summarize what happened here. So technically, water, yes, it grabbed a proton when it went and attacked H, a part of HCl, but technically it was a nucleophile, right? It used excess electron density to go and attack something that was delta plus. So it was a nucleophile. So wait, a base is a nucleophile? Yes. Let's do another example. Consider this reaction. So here, let's look for the most nucleophilic atom. As soon as you see an atom with a negative charge, it's pretty much going to be the nucleophile 99% of the time. So here we have an O minus. This O minus is going to be nucleophilic reactive because it has a negative charge. It has excess electron density that it wants to use. Okay, so we've established this O minus is going to be the nucleophilic atom where nucleophile stands for nucleus loving. So nucleophiles love electropositive things. So what's electropositive on the left hand side of the reaction? Well, we have oxygen, a part of H2O, where oxygen is delta minus, sucking electrons towards itself, leaving the two hydrogens in a delta plus electron deficit state. So here, that O minus is going to attack an H, a part of H2O, two in, two out. And we are going to get the following. So we produce OH minus. So here, water acted as an acid, lost a proton. So in summary, we have our base, our acid, our conjugate acid, and our conjugate base, where our conjugate base is going to be OH minus, because in the reverse direction, the OH minus is going to be the nucleophilic thing. It has that electron density, it's negatively charged. So it is going to attack to in, to out the hydrogen, a part of the OH on the other structure, where it will go to in, to out, and then we're back to the starting materials. So after going over the past two examples, what's the take home message? We have some base, which is going to be the most nucleophilic atom, where electrons are always going to start flowing from the base, where the base is going to be the most nucleophilic atom. And the base is going to attack a hydrogen on the other structure via a two in, two out reaction to produce a conjugate acid and a conjugate base, where in the reverse direction, the conjugate base is going to be the nucleophile that goes and attacks a hydrogen, two in, two out, to get you back to the starting materials. Let's do one more example, but let's make it look a little bit more complicated. Step one, identify your electronegative atoms. So here we have a carbonyl group, a part of a carboxylic acid, where the oxygen is going to be sucking electrons towards itself, taking those electrons away from the carbon, making that carbon delta positive, so electrophilic. 
that oxygen, a part of the OH, is electronegative, and it is going to be sucking electrons away from that hydrogen, making the hydrogen, a part of the carboxylic acid group, very delta positive, therefore very acidic. We also have OH minus, where we can easily identify the nucleophilic atom, it's the hydroxide ion, because there's a negative charge. So this is going to be our base. The base is the nucleophile. So the base, the OH minus, is going to take one of its lone pairs and attack the hydrogen, two in, two out, and you are going to get your conjugate acid and your conjugate base. So now question is, why was that hydrogen acidic? Why was it attacked by the hydroxide ion? You must argue acidity based on the stability of the conjugate base. So looking at the conjugate base, why is this negative charge stable? In organic chemistry, stability is always argued based on two points, resonance and inductive forces. If you can draw a resonance structure, your conjugate base is stable. Therefore, the hydrogen on the left-hand side of the reaction will be acidic. Here, we can draw one resonance structure. We can go two in, two out. Therefore, you are delocalizing that electron cloud, spreading the electrons over multiple atoms, so none of those atoms have to bear that negative charge the entire time. Therefore, the structure is happy. If you can spread that electron across multiple atoms, the structure is going to be more stable. So in summary, we have our base, which was the hydroxide ion, we have our acid, then we have our conjugate base, where the base, the nucleophile, attack the delta positive acidic hydrogen via two in, two out reaction. Therefore, we drew two arrows where we produced a conjugate acid and a conjugate base, where the conjugate base was stable. Therefore, if I increase the stability by either delocalizing the electrons via resonance or through inductive forces, where if you increase the stability of the conjugate base, you decrease the pKa, and if you decrease the pKa, that means you increase the acidity. So here, the initial acid was very acidic because the conjugate base was very stable. We've been over a few examples where we have a nucleophile and an electrophile, where we could easily identify which atom was going to be the nucleophile, hence the base, where the base was going to grab one hydrogen and the acid was going to lose one hydrogen. So now we've done three examples of arrow pushing. Let's do one more, but here we're gonna be talking about proton transfer. So consider this structure. Let's say we react it with H3O+. Whenever you have H3O+, essentially your teacher is telling you there is a source of H+. You can forget that it's H3O+, if you really want, and you can just think of this as H+. So now the question is, okay, what atom on this structure is going to want to attack an H+. Well, which atom has excess electron density? So lone pairs or pi bonds? The oxygen. So that oxygen is going to take one of its lone pairs and attack one of the hydrogens. Two in, two out you're gonna produce water, and now your structure is going to become positively charged. So now, whenever you produce H2O plus, because the oxygen would be attached to some group other than another hydrogen, that H2O plus is most likely going to leave as a leaving group. Water is the best leaving group ever. So now you think, okay, well, this water just kind of wants to leave. So what if it took those two electrons in the OC bond and it just left with them? Well, you're gonna produce water, but the carbon will be left in an electron deficit. But we produce water. And remember, water is a base. So water can therefore go and grab another hydrogen where it's going to go grab the hydrogen that is going to be one carbon away from the carbon with the positive charge, where it will go and attack that hydrogen via two in, two over, and you can actually produce a double bond. Later in the course, we will talk about how this is actually referred to an elimination reaction. But for this example, all that was important here was the fact that you could follow the flow of the electrons. So going back to the beginning, we had a two in, two over which resulted in H2O plus because the O is connected to an R group. Then the water left as a leaving group, leaving the carbon in a delta positive state. So then we had another water come in and grab a proton that was one carbon away from the carbon with the positive charge via two in, two over, creating a pi bond between the carbon that had the hydrogen stolen from it and the carbon that had the positive charge. Bada bing, bada boom. Hopefully that makes sense. And hopefully you can follow the flow of the electrons here. That is all that's important. Later, we will discuss elimination reactions. Let's finish this video off with one more example. But this example is going to be a little bit more tricky. Step one of every reaction ever, we must identify our electronegative atoms. So here we have a carbonyl group. So the oxygen is once again electronegative, pulling electrons towards itself, leaving that carbon in a delta plus state. So hence it's electrophilic, it could be attacked by something. So I know the base, which is going to be the nitrogen atom on the other reagent, why? Well, because the nitrogen is anionic. It literally has a negative charge. So it is nucleophilic because opposites attract. Nucleophiles love electrophilic things. So this N minus is going to want to attack something delta plus. But what we must notice is that the nitrogen group with the two isopropyls attached to the nitrogen is a very big and bulky group. Therefore, it's going to be very hard for it to go and attack via two into up the carbonyl carbon. That would be unfavorable because of sterics. 
So the nitrogen is actually going to attack what is referred to as the hydrogen on the alpha carbon, where the alpha carbon is just the carbon that is one carbon away from the carbon with the carbonyl group. So this nitrogen that is negatively charged, hence anionic, hence a base, it is going to attack that hydrogen, the alpha hydrogen, to in, to up. What do we get? Okay, well, we get our conjugate base and our conjugate acid. The nitrogen is now neutral. But here we now have a C minus. Well, this is unstable, right? Carbon is not electronegative. It doesn't like having electrons. Wait, could we draw a resonance structure? Yes, we can. We could draw a resonance structure where we could go to in to up. Now we have a negative charge on an oxygen. Hence, oxygen is an electronegative atom. It likes having electrons. Therefore, it is going to be happy. Therefore, it actually is stable. Therefore, if you increase the stability of the conjugate base, you're going to decrease the pKa of the acid on the left-hand side of the reaction, therefore increase the acidity of that hydrogen. Therefore, this actually was a good acid. And you're going to notice this trend over and over and over again in organic chemistry, where the alpha hydrogen is going to be very acidic. There are thousands of examples that are going to look pretty much the exact same. So yeah, that's pretty much it for today's video. In the next video, I'm going to cover Lewis acids and bases, which is what you're going to encounter 99% of the time in organic chemistry. But I hope this video made sense. If you have any questions, comments, and or concerns, please leave a comment down in the comment box. I respond to all the comments, so don't be afraid. And if you are still confused, I will make another video to try to clear up your concerns. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you have a great day, and I hope you learned something.